Now, there are a few things that I would like you to um, sort out on your own. We don't really have the time to do justice to it. And what I would suggest you do is uh, read up on it. And if you really find that you know you run up against the brick wall, then tell me next time, and I will help you out. I might even schedule some extra time or communicate with you and send you some emails. The one of the things I want you to really be okay with is the OSI model. Um, now, uh, I have a, a, um, a strange way to teach the OSI model. I use little pictures and stories, but I need a lot of time for that, and we don't have the, the time tonight. So now I might make a special video for you, <laughs> okay? Uh, but so what I will do for now is as we proceed through this course, I will explain the layers that are relevant. And you'll find that tonight we are we'll stay around on the on the bottom layers. In a nutshell, um, if you look at any communication system, there's a there's some hardware and there's some software involved. If you look at anything, anything that communicates via the air or via wire or whatever. And um, these Programs or whatever uh, are come in the form of what we call protocols. Protocols are just sets of rules. And to make it more sort of manageable, they have structured the protocols at various levels. And so, for example, here in this picture, at the bottom here, this little line that I draw here will be the medium. The medium is the cable, the coax, the fiber, the twisted pair, or whatever. The physical layer will be the hardware. And the hardware is the, the stuff that puts ones and zeros on the wire in the form of voltages. For example, plus 5 volt, minus 5 volt. Uh, that could represent a 1 and a 0. The stuff that does that represents the physical layer. And then I'll just go one layer up. The, the data link layer, that basically sends the, shall we call them packets of data? It sends the data. The little bunches of ones and zeros sends the packets. Now, the analogy here, this is where I'm going to stop on the OSR model tonight, is if we look at a train, then the medium would be the track, the physical layer would be the actual train, the locomotive and the coaches, and the data link layer would be the running train service uh, using the coaches in number one, uh, in the physical layer. In other words, these two layers are really much inseparable because the green layer, the data link layer, is the service that runs according to a timetable, but the physical layer is the hardware, it's the actual train, and it runs on the track. So with that in your mind, let's move on. And I'll do the other layers later on as we uh, proceed. Okay, this little slide you can leave for later. I just want to show you here, that I just uh, mentioned that the medium is the road or the rail, the physical layer is the hardware, it's like the train, and the data link layer sends and receives packets, it's the, like the train service. Or uh, another analogy is a courier. In other words, if you have a FedEx guy picking up a parcel, his car would be layer one, and the FedEx guy, the service picking up the stuff and packing it away would be layer two. Okay, this is not a perfect analogy, but it's fairly good for our purposes. Okay, so let's move on. Some other buzzwords that we need to be familiar with. Um, now, simplex is not used very often. Simplex is simply when somebody sends data and the other guy only receives it. It's like commercial radio broadcasting. It's called simplex. Not very um, useful in uh, industrial applications, but for commercial radio broadcasting and TV broadcasting, it's the norm. Okay, half duplex, very, very, very common. It's like push to talk on a walkie-talkie. Half duplex means I can send to you and then you can send back to me on the same medium, the same frequency or the same cable, but not at the same time. Now this cuts cost a little uh, because you don't need two of everything, but it, is, it slows you down because uh, it's very much like here on, on the, uh, Blackboard as we are speaking now. You cannot speak to me at the same time as I'm speaking to you after the let go of the microphone you can then talk back to me, and then you let go of the microphone and I talk. So that is half duplex, and it's very, very common. Uh, and then the other one is full duplex. Well, full duplex, you need two channels, uh, and some applications need it, but it's not very common in industrial data comms. Normally, a half duplex is fine. 
because you've got a controller and a remote station, the master and the slave, and the one talks to the other one, the other one replies back. Never at the same time. But this is full duplex. Now, modern Ethernet uh, that most of us use on our uh, uh, computers, if you have a Cat5 cable plugged in, uh, you can send and receive packets at the same time, usually with fast Ethernet or gigabit Ethernet, because they're full duplex. However, if you have Wi-Fi, <laughs> you can't do that because Wi-Fi is half duplex. You can send and receive, but not at the same time. You, you don't really realize that, but there, there is that difference. Okay, And so you'll find that uh, Ethernet on the cable is much, much, much faster than wireless. Far. Uh, so wireless is handy because you don't need cables, but it's much slower than wired communication. Okay. The other thing that we'll come back to, and uh, you, you'll find that there are basically two uh, types of uh, communication. I'll just write them down. It's asynchronous. I'll just abbreviate it, async, and synchronous. Now, this slide is a little bit premature because we'll, we'll delve into this deeply later on. But asynchronous is like not synchronous. And what that means is that the sender and the receiver have clocks that run at the same clock speed, but they're not synchronized. They, they are clueless as, you know, the, the, the one clock may go up where the other one's clock goes down. They're not they're running at the same speed. It's very much like cars standing at a traffic light. If you watch their, their, their indicators, their, flash, their flickers, you know, the turning lights, whatever you want to call it in your country, you'll find that they are flickering at more or less the same speed, you know, on, off, on, off, on, off, but not in sync. So some will go on while the others go off. That is asynchronous communication. And you find that in asynchronous communication, the packets of information are very, very short because you run out of sync very, very quickly. So your packets are quite often just a few bits long. Whereas in synchronous communication, your sync, your clocks are running synchronized, and I'll explain to you later how that's done. Uh, it's done by means of, for example, Manchester encoding and so on. Don't worry about it now. And um, but the problem is you have to synchronize them. And so what you find here, and this, there's always a preamble in the beginning, and the preamble can be several bytes of information. In Ethernet, it's uh, what's it? Uh, eight bytes. 64 bits, 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0. Come on, synchronize with me. 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1. And once they're synchronized, you go. And then you'll find that the rest of the packet is significant in size. For example, Ethernet is 1500 bytes of data, but you can do that because you synchronized in the beginning. So, so just uh, uh, to remember, uh, asynchronous always has a start bit in the beginning. You'll see that as it comes up. Always has a start bit. And sync always has a preamble, but don't worry about it too much. I'm just it's, this is like a preview of what's to come. I don't want you to stress too much. Uh, this is asynchronous. Now this whole thing is only a few bits. That's a start bit. It's a zero. This is data. The data could be seven bits, and then you have a parity bit, which is a one or a zero, and a stop bit. That's it. And you can see this whole thing is seven, eight, nine bits long. A very small, but watch the start bit in the beginning. So it's asynchronous, not synchronous. Right. Uh, very common with RS-232, RS-485, and that sort of thing. But slow, very slow. Okay, the other thing that I want you to do, um, can you just indicate by means of a yes or a no? Just say yes or no. Are you okay on binary and hex? I'm not going to help you now. I just need to know if you... Good, you, if you're good on binary and hex, just want to see if there's a no, yes, good. Hi, uh, Nathan, by the way, good day, uh, Nathan. Just keep tell me yes, no, or is it some she? Uh, you can just type, I'll watch the text box. Yeah, so, 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 I'm fine. <laughs> okay, uh, guys, okay, I'll see if, if any more comments come through. I think Alan is, uh, yeah, oh, fire is a little, okay, here's what I'd like you to do. I'm not going to, um, regurgitate everything now. Um, your page. Uh, what I want you to do is just go and read up on binary. And it's enough to understand that if you, like, in, for example, in decimal, that number is 9,321. 
because these are my ones, these are my tens, these are my hundreds, and these are my thousands. With binary, we have something like this. This is my ones, this is my twos, this is my fours, and this is my eights. <laughs> it's because it's base two. So this number here would be 15. Okay. So firstly, just get a handle on binary, the binary number system. Okay. When that is out of the way, just do a little bit of a read up on hex. And basically, it works like this. This would be zero. If we go on, we get to a point where this would be 8, and this would be 9, just counting in binary. But now, when you get to 10, uh, uh, hang on, this is, uh, hang on, this is 9, 9, this is 10, uh, 8 plus 2, there's 10. Now, you don't, we don't want to use two uh, uh, digits, so we call it A. <laughs> and so 11, and so I'll, you can work it out yourself. So 11 is B, uh, 12 is C, until you get to 15, which is F. Okay, so to summarize, what you have is in hexadecimal, you have the numbers 0 through 9, and then A through F. This represents zero, which is all zeros, which is zero. And then this is 1001, which is nine. Oh, this pen of mine. And then A is 1010, which is 10. And then F is 1111, which is 15. If you can just figure that one out. In other words, hexadecimal is by 16, and the characters are zero through F. Now, I don't want to sort of sit here and read. I should, uh, you know, take some time, just read up, make sure you're okay on binary and hex. And you, you don't have to be able to do calculations in your head. That's what a calculator is there for. If you use your Windows calculator and switch it to scientific, you can do it straight on your desktop. Okay, so now the other thing that you have to just come to grips with is this guy, sorry, called AFKEY. The... American Standard Code for Information Interchange. This is simply a series of seven-bit codes that represent the stuff on your keyboard, plus some others. I want you to ignore this because these are useful protocols. Um, but if you look at the stuff on the right-hand side, and the one uh, example I'm going to take because that's what the slides are based on, is the number F. So what we do is if you look at the uppercase F, shift F. Now, if you go up this column, you have two choices. You can use the hex or the binary. You can say hex or binary. So we can write down 4 or 1, zero, zero. Now, this is actually, uh, uh, because ASCII is a 7-bit code, uh, we don't write the 0 down on the left because uh, the one zero, uh, zero, 1, double zero is actually 4, but we can skip the 0 because... It's, we, we're going for seven bits. What do we do then? And I'll change colors. You go blue, and we go to the left, go this way, and we can now either, once again, choose the hex or the binary. We can go to six, or we can type zero, one, one, zero. So those two numbers uh, represent the shift F on your keyboard. In other words, 46 hex is a very quick, elegant way to say it. Or if you want to be a purist and stick to binary, then you say it's one double one triple zero double one zero, and that is the same as F. Okay, so you that, that is what what happens on the wire. The voltage goes ups and down to signal one zero zero one one zero, and that represents an F. I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so once again, just play with this. Make sure you can take any character and just write down the hex or the binary. Hello, Nancy. Right, so. Move on. So what I want to show you, oh, let me show you what we did with the F. Um, sorry, I'm just going to go back, and, and, and I'm going to ask you to memorize something. Look at that number, 46. It's 100-0110. So what we're going to do here is get a blank page. The page. 46 is one double zero. 0110. In data communications, there is a, an unofficial convention that when we send data, we send the least significant bit 
first and the most significant bit last. So that they do arrive in the right sequence. So what we're going to do is flip this like you flip an egg or a pancake. So you just write it back to front. So zero one one zero 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 one. Just remember that. So what I've done, I've taken my F and I've turned it back to front. So what I will do now is send it like this. Okay, there we go. You can you see there? There's my LSB and there is my MSB. You can check it out afterwards. There is my zero one one. 0, 0, 0, 1. That is my F back to front. And we're using RS-232 levels here where the red is a high voltage, which represents a 0, and the green is a low voltage, representing a 1. If you have an oscilloscope, it looks like that. Now, here in the beginning is a single start bit, which is always a 0 by convention. And then there is a parity bit, which we'll come back later, which is a bit out of place here, because we'll need, we'll, we'll discuss parity and stuff. And there's a stop bit at the end. Now, mark my word, if you actually clamp an oscilloscope onto the transmit wire of your serial port and you hit shift F, that is exactly what you see on your screen. Uh, and we actually have a remote lab set up where we can actually do that over a, a distance. There we go. Okay, so just to show you the basics of how we send uh, letters over a wire. We convert the letter to ones and zeros, and we use voltages to represent that ones and zeros. And this is async, where we put a start, and then the data, a parity, like a check bit, and a stop bit, and kabam, there she goes. That is uh, serial. It's actually very nice for some people to actually look at the scope and say, oh, this is, this is what happens when I press a key on the keyboard. It's quite a revelation for some.